This is Arttober TV, and I'm Erin Holcomb. This week, we are highlighting the Gordon Jewish Community Center. Now for 10 things to do this week. I, I have to say every, every square inch of that building is, ha, every space has an art show of some, or an exhibit of some sort going on. The building is circular once you're inside and, and it springs off into some, you know, other uh, spaces, but the, the main, the main walkthrough is circular. So if you walk around that building, you will see art, you will just keep walking from one art exhibit to another. And so and October is by far our busiest because we have, besides the galleries, which there are four main, well, now there are five main galleries and three of them are changed monthly. Um, another new one, which we created for the seniors, for senior artists in our community and community, I mean, all of Nashville. So when we don't limit our community to the Jewish community, our, our um, galleries, we're a community center just based in Jewish values. So and Jewish values is really to um, reach out to everybody. And so, um, so the, the set, so the gallery we ju I just created, we, I, 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 you know, it's hard to like separate myself from this job. I've been in it for so, doing this for so long in the center, it feels like my home um, is for seniors. So that's a fourth gallery and that changes like every two, three months. And then um, we have, um, an art, we have an actually, we have an art once a year annual fair happening in October, um, uh, community wide and even beyond because people are coming from other states to show their work. And that's just a fair for two days. And then we have an annual exhibit, which is so beautiful and so spiritual. And that will move into the one of the main galleries that stays up for a year. And that is called Under One Roof, which is a community based um, uh, art show in which we involve all the organizations around town who we reach out to who would like to participate. It's based on uh, the Jewish holiday of Sukkot, which I could explain to you or people can Google. And it, this year the um, theme is um, hope and renewal. And so different organizations like Hall of Fame, the Frist, all, so many, um, Chinese Alliance, so many. I mean, right now, I think there are about 35 um, we have participating this year, and they do a piece based on uh, hope and renewal and what it means from their organization's point of view. So that's a beautiful exhibit, and that will be in one of the galleries that stays up all year. So the three galleries that are, will be changing, well, are for the month, the gallery galleries that are up for, from October 1st through the 31st, um, will feature, uh, in the Janet Levine March Gallery, will feature the photography of Vince Wallace, his work is like, it, 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 he prints these humongous photos on like glass. Uh, they're, they're, it's like you, you, it, you feel like you're in water or you, it's, it's really a beautiful um, uh, medium that he chooses to you know, portray his photography. And so the, that'll be up in the Janet Levine March Gallery. And then along with his work on pedestals, we'll have uh, the, the um, sculpture of Robert Thigensoller. And he's a long time Nashvillian artist. And um, I believe he was born in Nashville. And um, so he has beautiful, elegant sculptures and they'll, that'll be in the Janet Levine March Gallery. And then in the Janet Levine March Gallery two space is um, Paula Lasitra, 
and she, her work actually is up now and we're keeping it through October. Generally, I change it every month. It just happened that um, an artist canceled every time. Sometimes that happens last minute and sometimes I'll scurry to um, try to find and fill the space in. Um, but I, I decided to keep hers up because it was so meaningful, her work. It's her, her work is um, the way she paints is like in a folk folk art type of style. Um, but the, the pieces are really deep. It, it's all about 9-11 and the World Trade Center. So I thought that was a really powerful statement. And I thought, you know, that leaving it up for another month is, is really just, you know, impactful. And so I left that up in the galleries. And um, so she'll be there for October as well. And then in the other gallery, um, the Sig Held Gallery, is a, a curated show, which I do from time to time where I get inspired by a theme and I put a call out to artists because um, I like to, sometimes when I get inspired, I wanna see, you know, when I put the call out where this can go. And it's, and so it's like a ride, you know, I don't know what I'm gonna get. And um, so I put out a call to artists uh, based on the theme of the message of dreams. And that was inspired by um, the Carl Jung Society, which I am a part of. And um, I've been monitoring my dream, journaling my dreams my entire life. And I joined the Carl Jung Society in New York, and then I joined it here in Nashville. And I met this woman, Lauren Huff, at Laura Huff, and she does a dream class, um, a group class where you people um, joined together for maybe six or eight weeks and we discuss our, each other's dream. We tell our dreams and we, it's, it's a whole method and it's fascinating. And I thought, and, and through her, because I've always been journaling my dreams, she challenges us to uh, do something visual, like take the dream and make it visual, not just journaling it. And so I started doing that I started making these t-shirts actually. And then I thought, what would happen if I put this call out to artists? And so that's what that show is gonna be about. And I, I got such a big response immediately. I put it on social media and you know, the gallery is already gonna be full, filled. And so the, the work that I have on display here is part of what I call the water series. And um, it's more, in a more impressionistic and abstract vein. I come from more of a traditional um, landscape photography background in terms of my fine art. And, um, and so I think community is incredibly important for all people, and especially for artists who tend to be more isolated uh, as individuals and we want to be off in our corner creating. But it's really important for us to, to be together and explore and experience life um, with each other. So shows like this are awesome because they give us a chance to do that as artists and also to interact with people who get to experience the art. And so hopefully that, you know, art is all about community. You know, art is about connecting with somebody else because there's a creator behind the art. And so really when you're interacting with a piece of art, you're interacting with that person that, that, that created that. So I think that's really cool as well. This, this piece is called a downward spiral. And there's usually when I start carving a stone, I, I just go into the stone itself with a pneumatic uh, hammer uh, tool. And from there, it kind of reveals itself to what it becomes, what it becomes. So uh, this one is titled Downward Spiral because kind of has a downward spiral shape to it. So that's basically the names will come after I start the piece. So most of my work is like that. Um, I'll come up with a name for it as I go get into the piece. Um, carving stone is kind of like that. You just got to reveal what's inside the stone, basically. Well, um, I, I'm originally from New York City, so I'm a transplant here in Nashville from 2008. And uh, I was in New York when the World Trade Center catastrophe happened. But up until that 
September, I was writing an audio tour for the observation floor of World Trade Center 2. So I spent a lot of time down there and looking out the windows, trying to figure out how to direct a visitor's gaze to the South Street Seaboard, the Empire State Building, every view. And so I have, everyone has a special place in their heart for everything that happened. But to me, the towers had a lot of meaning. And the audio tour was produced and ready to go right before that um, disaster happened and so nobody ever got to hear the tour so it's sort of like it exists produced you know you can hear the stops um, but but nobody ever heard it and so leading up to the 20 year anniversary uh, which was September 2021 I painted all year long um, kind of like heartfelt tributes to the World Trade Towers and so different views, different ideas, different perspectives of the World Trade Center. And that's what this show is all about. Okay, view from the 107th floor. So when I was writing the audio tour, this is what I would do. I would stand out the window and I would figure out how am I gonna tell people to see the three East River bridges, the Woolworth building, which is that light colored building in the foreground, and then across the river to Queens or Brooklyn, depending on where we were and to describe, okay, behind the Woolworth building is, you know, the some other building. And um, so this is what the visitor would see when they looked at the building. And I was trying so much to capture what's not there anymore, because this is kind of what you would have experienced. So here's your view from the um, Brooklyn side of uh, the East River, looking at the Brooklyn Bridge and how the World Trade Center was always sort of a focal point wherever you were when you were downtown, even if you were in another borough. So the Brooklyn Bridge went right across and it was not far from where, where the uh, World Trade Center was. This to me is the most iconic um, painting of the series um, because I feel like it really captures how those buildings looked at night and you know some office window lights were on and some weren't and that there's a very specific viewpoint vantage point where you can see the statue of liberty with the backdrop i'm sorry with the statue of liberty with the backdrop of the world trade center um and i'm not sure where you are i think you might be in new jersey or maybe you're on a boat um, but I love i love this conflation of the two um very iconic uh, symbols of New York. Well, um, when 9 11 happened, I feel like the whole world became one community. Um, the whole world that, you know, well, anyway, the whole world became one community because everybody just, um, all their hearts were pouring out to our country, to New York City. Um, and so it made like an immediate community. And it's terrible to think of a, a disaster making that happen but it really did happen and everybody f dropped all of the other um, differences that we might have even between countries and suddenly everybody was in, in solidarity um, with what we were experiencing here in, in the u.s and so i think of that kind of community a lot um, and um, and then there's the art community which to me you can think about politics, you can think about money, you can think about all these things that are pressures and, and, and stress-related life things. But I feel for art makers that we're trying to make the soul be more important, make the heart be more important. Because that really is what's more important, you know? Don't forget that. I mean, the arts get brushed aside sometimes. And it's, and it's easy to just walk by artwork and not really even pay attention to it. But, Right there is somebody stopping to say, I'm going to show you my view. And it's very particular to what's coming out of my heart and soul. And, and I want you to see it and stop a moment to take that in. Oh, and I just want to mention just quickly because the, everything's happening in the fall. So we have the Jewish Film Festival that starts up every year, which is art, film, okay? And we have the Jewish Book Series. It's going to start in December. And um, I think, what else? I think that's it for now for those notes. But you can go to our webpage. Just, I just want to put that out, nationaljcc.org, to see everything. But for the shows that are up in our October, um, 
the main galleries, which I'd mentioned, which are five of them, they'll be up, all of them for sure, October 1st through the 31st. Um, and so the galleries are open and people just put on a mask, sign in at the front desk. You can come with a bunch of people if you like, and um, it's free. It's everything to come into the building, it's free. And if you even wanna become a member, we'll be happy to give you a tour. It's an awesome place. Um, so yeah, so all of October or every day, seven days a week. Thank you, Carrie, Vince, Robert, Paulette, and the Gordon JCC for joining us today. Our call for artist submissions for the 2022 Arttober Nashville Featured Artists will open on November 29th. Stay tuned to arttobernashville.com for more details. As we bid farewell to Arttober 2021, our 10th anniversary, we want to give a special thank you to our presenting sponsors who make this all possible. Now playing Nashville, the Community Foundation of Middle Tennessee, Tennessee Arts Commission, Nashville Convention and Visitors Corporation, and Truist. Let's not forget all of our partnering organizations that you can view on our website at arttobernashville.com. We'll see y'all next year on Arttober TV.